everybody, Matt Aaron with American Mover here for the Armored Academy of Arizona, and this week's tech tip is Biothane. Um, basically, I'm going to go into how to install this stuff on your kit, uh, and more importantly, why you would use this. So, Biothane is a uh, it's like a leather analog. It's uh, like a nylon high tensile webbing that's been impregnated with like a urethane plastic in a leather texture. Like you looking at this through the video, you probably couldn't tell what it is right up close, but it looks really close to leather. Um, but it is in fact a synthetic and it is super duper strong. Um, it's been used in the past on things like kind of like mountaineering gear, bags, dog collars. My dogs have some biothane collars. Um, there, it, it's just some really strong, really, really good stuff. Uh, it resists any sort of mildew or decay. It's really hard to tear it. It's really hard to cut it. Um, and when installed properly, this stuff will like far outlast an equivalent leather. Um, and so that is why you would like it for, like, why it might be good for your booger kit. Um, if you've been to tournament, you know how much of a pain in the butt it is for you to get, I don't know, a match or two in and then have a strap blow out because you missed it on your pre-armor check or the leather decided to dry out in transit or it just got tired um, and the rivet tore through. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna set up on, on my vise over here. I'm gonna show you how I, how I put holes in this because that's important and uh, how I actually rivet this to a piece of, uh, to a piece of metal there are some intricacies involved with that. So give me just a minute, I'll set you up on a different angle and we'll get to work. All right, real quick, here are the tools you're gonna need. You're gonna need propane torch, butane torch, something like that. A little butane lighter will be will probably work okay. Um, it'll take you longer if you're using a little BIC though. So I really just like to use one of these propane map gas torches. The map gas, you don't need that. You just need something with some pretty decent heat. Uh, you'll also need a good pair of strong shears. Like I said, this stuff is pretty difficult to cut. Um, not to say that it can't be cut, but uh, you'll want some good shears, some good sharp shears or scissors. Uh, you want maybe a marking pen, either a silver or a regular sharp. You'll work fine just to mark out where you want your holes. You'll need uh, a nail. I just use the same little roofing nails that I use for a lot of my riveting jobs. You need to buy a thing, and you'll also need some kind of pliers, some kind of tongs to hold this nail with while we while we punch the holes. Um, so those are the tools you're gonna need. Um, yeah. So I'll move you over, we'll get set up. I'll show you how we're actually gonna do this. Okay, so one of the intricacies about biothane is that you can punch holes in this. If you have a nice sharp leather, leather awl, I do not recommend that report, approach. Uh, if you just cut a hole or you punch a hole in this, that is one of the times that you can create kind of a weak point and then the rubber and the, the strapping in between can actually tear. So uh, in order to maintain a good structure of the webbing, I like to melt my holes, hence why uh, you, need the, you need the torch for it. Um, it's really honestly pretty simple. Uh, I like to use my vise, but you can use pretty much anything with like a backing plate or some kind of hole in it. I'll go ahead and I'll take this out and we will mark where we're punching our hole. And as we mark our hole, go ahead and I'll take our this little nail, hold it in whatever holding apparatus you have, like a pair of vice grips pliers, a pair of tongs. Um, if you have like a long, thin piece of something with a pointy end, you probably do away with the tongs, but I just like to use these because they're it's cheap and it doesn't matter if I burn it up. So, I've got my hole marked. I'll go ahead and take my, take my point and we'll heat it up. You don't need to go super hot with this, but since this is a small piece of metal, I heat it till it's glowing. Probably don't need to go that hard, but uh, it's fine, I can do more than one hole at a time if I need to, if I heat it up pretty warm. So that's pretty good. You'll see the see there's some heat in there. I'll just find my hole. You just pop your hole right through and let the heat kind of burn it out. Go ahead and 
take that warm little, warm little nail and kind of melt the insides of the hole once you've punched the hole through. So you take the crumbs off, a nice, pretty clean hole in there. And then on the inside of that, it's all sealed up. This is all one contiguous piece of rubber again, and you don't need to worry about it splitting. Last little note, sorry, forgot to mention this. When you cut this stuff too, you'll also have to do something very similar when you punch your holes. It'll leave this nice frayed surface. There we go, nice little frayed surface. Oh boy. Yeah, there we go. Nice little frayed surface. So you go ahead and hit that with your torch real quick. Just like this. Just melt those ends down from fraying out or breaking out at the tip there. So, sorry about that, forgot. Torture tips. I don't want you guys to start taking this as, in biothane is indestructible. It definitely will break, it will cut, um, but compared to a similarly sized piece of leather, this stuff is so much stronger. And then as far as tensile strength goes, this is, way better. It doesn't stretch, it doesn't age, it doesn't dry out, um, and that's why this is really good stuff. Um, and so then what I'll end up doing, we'll get whatever piece of metal I end up riveting it to. And just like our previous little tech tips on riveting, you'll pop that through wherever you're going to rivet it and you'll peen over the other side. You can check out our other video for that. I am gonna do this one up real quick and I'm gonna show you a couple little details about this that are still important. Um, so give me just a second, I'll go ahead and do this off camera and then we'll go back and uh, we'll finish this up. Okay, I actually switched my pieces out. I uh, punched the hole in a little bit of a different spot. But um, point being, you can see I've got my rivet nice and set here, nice and flush. Uh, when you set rivets into biothane. It's especially important that you get it really straight, especially with these little roofing nails or anything with like a sharp, thin head. Um, if you're worried about it, go ahead and add another little spacing washer. But since I've kind of worked this out, uh, I know how deep and how tight to set these so that it doesn't become a problem. But if you end up setting this too deep and too tight or crooked, you can sink this head into the biothane and that'll create like a little stress point where you can start to cut this with the rivet. So um, just be be careful to set these pretty evenly and pretty cleanly. Um, it is it, it is an easier thing to rivet. You don't have to worry about it quite as much as leather. So the le leather will have a similar problem. If you set it too tight, you can actually cut your cut your rivet strap with the with the rivet. You're trying to you know put everything together with, but um, you just got to keep an eye on that. Otherwise, that's it. Bing bang boom. Bio thing, baby. This is some good shit. So last little notes on this stuff. Um, I like to kind of set this up. It's got a little, like, I like to set these up so that when you rivet your metal on your armor, if you're riveting stuff together, especially if you're wearing floating kit, I like to rivet everything using biothane, metal to metal. I like to use as few ties as possible to get it to sit on my gambeson and I also usually add redundant strapping to this stuff so if you'll notice on this piece this is just a lobster tail it's going to sit on the back underneath the helmet aventail um, but I usually at least do two sets of straps maybe even three and sometimes I'll leave an extra little one with a hole pre-punched so that if something does tear out it's a matter of just cutting off the old one driving out the old rivet and switching over to the other strap so I like to run a little bit of redundancy on these. Uh, the other thing to consider with biothane is that in certain cases, it is a little less flexible than your equivalent leather. Um, so you might have to add a little bit more, a little bit less slack, depending on where you're putting it in your kit. Um, and that's not something I can really show you on video, but you have to consider it when you're swapping over to this stuff. Um, otherwise, that's really all I got. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't, uh, ask any questions and uh, leave any comments you may have. And uh, you guys fight safe, fight hard. Have a good one.